All right, welcome everyone. Gonna give folks a few moments to join and we'll do a quick intro about Ace Lab, show you guys how to access today's presenters if you're looking for some more information after today's webinar. And then we'll go ahead and get started with today's handrail design workshop. All right, looks like we've got a good amount of folks jumping in. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right, um, so this webinar is uh, being hosted by Ace Lab. Ace Lab is a free resource for architects, designers, uh, building industry professionals to be able to research products, um, save them to their projects and manage their specification workflow. So we've got a ton of free tools and resources here. I'll throw one of my colleagues meeting links in the chat momentarily. So if you've got um, some questions about how to use Ace Lab, you can reach out to one of my colleagues and set up a free demo. You can always use this live chat as well on our site. This is staffed by a real human. So if you ever have some questions, you can uh, reach out directly to our team through this chat. That's another great place to come. Um, today, just wanna show you a few quick things. Um, so if you are looking to connect with Promenade, today's presenters after today's webinar, or explore some more about their products, you can always use the search bar to type in the name of any company or any product that you're looking for. It'll cross search between categories, brands, and resources. So just head to that brands tab and go over to their page on Ace Lab. From here, you can see an overview of company information. You can use this button to get in touch with Rob directly, ask him questions, um, connect about a project. You can view some uh, main values of the, of the company as well as save these products to your projects. And I'm gonna show you a little preview of something really cool when you uh, save these products. So I'm gonna go ahead here and add this to one of my projects here. And I've got quite a few, so there we go. Single family house, let's go with that. Um, this hand adds it to a handy comparison table. You can also go and view your project right from here. And what I'm gonna show you is a little preview of something that is currently uh, only early access. So anyone in this webinar, if you're interested in getting some early access to our newer tools, uh, you can reach out and we will get you all set up with the newest version of our platform. So what I'm gonna show you today is this schedules feature. This is a newer feature. Um, it really works as a way to organize your product uh, research and your product specifications in one place that is really accessible to your team. So over here, let's head over to our railing schedule. Here you can see that product I just saved at the bottom here, got a few options, and there's the ability to add custom data into this as well as pull data from Ace Labs platform. So it saves a lot of time in you know, getting your schedules all set up um, and really allows you to customize it to uh, whatever works best for you and for your firm. So if you're interested in learning some more about this, um, keep your eye out in the chat and uh, I'll send over a link so that you can schedule a quick demo. We'll help you get all set up. Other than that, I just wanna mention after today's webinar, if you uh, indicate some interest in getting connected with today's presenters, we'll go ahead and make a conversation with uh, the presenters over on your Ace Lab account. So to get to your conversations, you can just go over here to this home button, hover over to your conversations, and this will give you an overview of all your conversations on Ace Lab. Um, Ace Lab is a really great way to connect with product reps and collaborate. Um, it allows for really seamless collaboration. And you're also gonna get email notifications anytime you get a new message here. You can respond directly to those emails. So you don't need to open Ace Labs platform, but it can be a great way to kind of keep your product research and collaboration organized all in one space. All right, that's it for me. Um, if you've got some more questions about that, please feel free to reach out um, either through the chat or uh, through our website. Um, and then I just wanna encourage folks today, um, we're really you know, looking to have a workshop session. Um, so we're looking to hear from you, um, you know, what are problems that you've encountered with specifying handrails? What are questions that you have? Um, so feel free to chime in either using the Q&A uh, chat box or using the chat itself. Um, we would love to hear some questions from you and be able to address those in the moment. All right, without further ado, I'd love to introduce Rob Geller. Rob is coming to us from Promenade presenting today's handrail workshop. And it looks like we've also got Kel joining. Perfect timing, Kel. Oh, my goodness. Hello, can you hear me okay? <laughs> yes, we can. Um, awesome. And then we've got Janice from the Promenade team as well. So we've got a great group here ready to answer all of your questions about handrails. So whenever you're ready, Rob, feel free to take it away. I think you're on mute. The classic, the classic 2020s, you're muted. Um, yeah, as you can see, between Kel and me, we average, we, we, uh, average out to a normal head of hair. So... Uh, Kel, Kel's outside, obviously. Uh, Kel is the founder and inventor of Promenade. Uh, we're located in Montreal. Janice is our director of marketing, and I'm the um, <laughs> uh, I do business development 
Um, I just want to go back uh, quickly to something Bo mentioned about connecting with us. If you do um, connect with us, you want to uh, send us a message through ACE, uh, through the ACE Lab platform, uh, it would be really helpful if you describe um, the project or, you know, if there's a project uh, that you're getting the information for, what type of project it is. Um, handrails, in one sense, are ubiquitous, but we've done um, you know, so many different types of, uh, you know, construction uh, jobs that uh, the more specific you can be, we can provide you, um, you know, um, you know, more the most relevant information. So, um, so we created Promenade about 15 years ago. Um, and what Promenade does is simplifies the entire handrail process. It started as uh, identifying a problem with the installation, but as once we developed the product, we re and started um, actually selling and marketing uh, Promenade, we realized that the the roadblocks were end to end, from understanding handrails to getting them shipped and delivered, and all the information at every end. So we we um, have said in a uh, number of different ways. Uh, we sell simplicity in the form of a handrail and all the things that go with it. Send us the plans. We do the takeoff, um, you know, the renders, everything. So we want to make the, the entire thing as simple as possible, but also quick. Um, we've, we, I think we've really effectively solved a lot of the lead time issues. What took three to six months prior to Promenade coming to market, we can do in two to three days. So I've got a call from Los Angeles on a Thursday morning, um, a custom ADA compliant handrail was installed in LA the next day at one in the afternoon. So um, that's the, the the broad picture of Promenade. Today's subject we want to talk about is lighting in, in handrails. And when we developed Promenade, the concept behind uh, the system was to be, able, to be able to put brackets wherever you need them, whenever you need them. They can be added, removed, repositioned, so they're in the right place, either hitting studs or avoiding other impediments at, at any point, even after the handrail is on the wall. What that required was a continuous channel, very similar to track lighting, and it sort of, it was screaming uh, at us, uh, I need LEDs or lighting in this channel, and everybody who would look at it would say, this, this is a product made for lighting. Um, you know, our investors, our board of directors, our friends, family, you know, uh, clients, everybody. The challenge was we have a modular system, which meant we needed a modular LED um, system to go with it. Strip lighting um, doesn't really work. You never know where the brackets are gonna be, where the bends and the brakes uh, are gonna be. So we've had to develop a, uh, a modular system. Um, so we will, we will show that to you. Um, Janice, I don't know if you could just show a picture of the, uh, the R01. Um, yep, just, are you able to see it? Oh, maybe I'm looking at the wrong, uh, hang on. I don't think you're sharing screen. Yet. Yeah, you're not sharing your screen. Sorry about that. Is it popping up now? No. Nope, it's not. Um, if you click the green button and then you just have to click share again after you select the window. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not like Teams where you just click it once and it shares. You, you click share screen and then... There's a second. Yeah, sorry, I did do it twice. Hang on. Thanks for your patience, everyone. We'll get this sorted uh, quickly. Always worked. I'm going to leave and hide. Sorry. Uh, do you have a, a link, Rob, to what you're yep. looking at here? Yeah, I can do that. Um, hang on. Oh, I'm just going to get back there. Here we 
There we go. Awesome. There we go. There. Yeah. So as you can see, this is a this channel, this profile is the entire length of the handrail. So an LED fits quite elegantly in there. Um, and it's it's a modular um, product. I'll show you. A, and just to put the size in context, there's Kel holding it. Um, so it's actually it's not a strip, but it's modules that um, each side of it has. So this is about two feet of uh, wiring. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, and it's low voltage, uh, so it doesn't require an electrician uh, to to do the installation. Um, when we first developed it, uh, Kel's previous occupation was uh, he designed and manufactured the world's first ADA compliant hand dryer. And some of our uh, board members were concerned that, you know, were we developing the electronics properly? So uh, it was probably one of the best comebacks we've had. Kel said, well, my previous life was a product that had a blade spinning at 2000 revolutions per minute driven by how many volts? Hundreds of volts and hundreds of many amps. Uh, next to running water. So I think I'm good with this. Um, so, um, and this is an all weather product, good indoors, outdoors. There's two models of it, which we'll show you. Um, so I'll let Kel describe some of the technical side of it. And then uh, we can talk about the, uh, some of the applications, um, you know, and uh, where, where, we, uh, where we've used it. Sure, thanks Rob. Um, everybody can hear me okay? I can, yep. yep. Oh, yep. perfect. Um, yeah, sorry for the technical problems before. So as Rob said, it's a module. Uh, we opted for the module um, approach rather than a continuous um, lighting. Uh, they both have their uh, uh, place. Um, but the advantage of having these uh, individual modules is, first of all, it's kind of a, a nice, elegant look. You can uh, create this uh, wash of light at uh, irregular intervals along the wall, if you wish. Um, it's very flexible and um, you can add, because it, each module is high intensity, uh, by putting more of them or fewer of them, uh, you can vary the amount of light uh, more uh, easily than you can with a strip lighting. Uh, but perhaps uh, most uh, importantly, uh, for installation, it uh, really is a, a bonus because you don't have to worry about uh, trying to uh, get the um, strip to fit precisely between uh, brackets. Um, you just uh, place the modules at whatever interval you require and daisy chain them. Uh, Rob mentioned uh, the two feet of uh, wiring. Uh, so they're all in series. It's not like uh, uh, Christmas tree lights where if one goes out or the old fashioned Christmas tree lights where if one went out, they all went out. Um, each time you add a module and you can have up to 49 uh, of them uh, on a standard 100 watt uh, uh, driver, um, they, uh, the next one connects in, in series, or sorry, in parallel. Um, so uh, by placing the modules wherever you want in the, uh, the channel, uh, you get the desired light pattern. So the one that you can see in that image is what we call the uh, promenade flood. Our channel, yeah. our channel looks flood. Um, and it creates a, a widely dispersed beam of light. Um, it's really, you know, you can see the module itself uh, from the side of the handrail, which is, uh, it makes that nice uh, elegant look where you can uh, see spots of light along the handrail. And uh, each element, I can go on and on. You asked me to start on technical, uh, Rob. Uh, yep. I'll just, you know, you know, kind of wrap up this portion by saying that each module is just under two watts. Um, but with the uh, um, the high efficiency of the LEDs, it makes, uh, like I say, bright light that is also dimmable. So in addition to being able to change the number of modules, uh, how frequently they're spaced, you also get to uh, uh, dim them if you wish. And um, so that's uh, you know that's the basic concept of the module. But uh, you know I'll let uh, you guys show some more examples, and we can talk about the the other one, um, the sort of the newer model, which is the Promenade uh, Channel Lux Focus module, as opposed to Flood, which is a more concentrated beam. Um, and that, uh, uh, as I say, uh, maybe I'll we'll, we'll lead up to that a little bit later. But this is the the basics of it: are these uh, modules that can be uh, spaced or dimmed as required. Yeah, uh, I'm going to um, go to um, so this is um, there we go. this is what it looks like in action. So um, 
this is and it's good for residential commercial um and um this is um this is one of our uh first first installations uh and as you can see um there's uh, like one four um because it's um it's uh, accent lighting and uh, not you know uh, a code you know health and safety it's so you know it, it gives you a, a beautiful finish and also lights up lights up the stairs uh so you, so you can see them um uh but when we start getting into some of the commercial um we did a job for the uh, orlando utilities commission and it was because of because of the lighting that we were awarded this job um i met the head of the Orlando office um, about a year and a half ago. And um, Jacob uh, Jacob said, uh, design this. It, it's really a showpiece um, uh, installation or a construction project for Orlando Utilities Commission. Uh, I'm just going to open it up here. Um, here we go. So I'll show you a couple of things. Sorry, you're, you're cutting out. I can't, can't hear you well. Your your signals. Your signal. Your signal's not uh how about now? That is but yeah. Well you just muted yourself, but uh so um so uh the the entire um, installation had been designed, and this is um, a portion of a 450 foot elevated, you know, open air curved walkway. Um, and the the way the LEDs had been specified was from different um, ad hoc systems. So it was really galvanized. It was going to be galvanized, you know, uh, steel to painted gray and uh, holes drilled you know along the way you know for for the leds to um uh, uh to be exposed um and it was it it was aside from that everything was beautiful and it was this uh central structure in the whole installation that was going to have this as um as, as dan called it this frankenstein that was really just going to take away from everything and the instant he saw our system he he sort of overrode everything and uh, said, okay, uh, promenade is going in. So uh, what you see here actually is the entire guardrail system, um, the balusters, the handrails, the secondary handrail, everything is our system. Um, and it was uh, installed by the team at Ajax Construction who had never put their hands on promenade before. And it went uh, quite quite smoothly. Um, there were you know a number of challenges one was just getting the power source to the um, to the lights so the um, walkway is um, a concrete pan uneven uh, depths the whole way so everything was um, secured by through bolts and the power um, uh, is on the uh, the drivers are on the underside uh, so it just sort of talked to the uh, they're all under there so it just talks to the sort of the versatility of the system and where you can where you can put things and um uh all went in um you know really uh really smoothly um uh i think it ended up being what about 900 lights uh right kill something like that that rings a bell yeah, yeah. i think uh, i think what you see between this project and the one previously with the interior shot is a, a bit of the flexibility of the modules that you can have just a couple of rubs for accent lighting where you can space them at the two foot intervals you get enough light for um, you know safety lighting um, as is shown on the in this uh, installation just maybe a few more kind of technical yeah. notes you talk about getting the the power there there were something like 900 um, leds but uh, uh, only um, i guess uh, 12 or 14 uh, drivers at various uh, places along uh, the uh, uh, the walkway. And uh, yeah. so the drivers are located underneath and then uh, fed up through the posts. So, so the whole system 
uh, kind of works with our, um, Ron mentioned the channel grip railing with a channel where you can place the LEDs at any place. I have uh, one of the uh, ugliest pictures you're going to see, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <there you> <laughs> yeah. This was... So, yeah. So with, with the, with the channel on the channel grip railing, not only can you put the LEDs, you can also place brackets and end caps and posts at any place. That's the key to the channel uh, grip railing. Uh, but every one of those posts or uh, brackets is a potential entry for uh, electricity. So the brackets themselves have a wire channel inside them. Uh, any bends or corners in, in the um, in the railing uh, has a channel for the wire. So the entire system is designed uh, to be wired without having to, um, uh, you know, fish wires or drill for wires. It all goes through this existing channel. And the way the the uh, there's in that ugly picture, <laughs> you see how the uh, the the modules are installed at, at intervals and the wire is just laid in the channel. And then we have a kind of a clip-in um, cover uh, that completes the round uh, profile of the handrail, uh, matches up with the uh, LEDs. So the whole thing becomes smooth and round, uh, but you've essentially using the channel grip railing itself as a raceway for the wires without having to do any fishing. Oh, oh hang on. I just closed the, the photo that I wanted to... Uh... Oh. There. Um, this, so this, you can see that he in this, we've got two types of infill for that channel. This is a vinyl one, and you, and and this one on the left. It's hard to see, but there's it's a metal clip in that's the same radius as the handrail. So it basically creates a raceway for the wires that's integrated in the handrail at no extra cost. Yeah. Um, the the key feature of the you know, as you can see from the photos, it's an indoor outdoor product. Um, but um, it is it's environmentally sealed, uh, but also designed for extremely long life. So where we say we have a high intensity module, it's actually in each module there are uh, eight uh, individual LEDs and they're arranged in a in a line. Um, and that gives you that kind of linear light. Uh, but also because the handrail itself is aluminum, and I could talk about the advantages of aluminum handrail, but uh, for our purposes, the, uh, talking about LEDs, it's also a heat sink. So the LEDs run nice and cool, and they last for 80,000 hours or, or more. Um, so you've got an extremely long life product as well as the easy installation. Um, yeah, just uh, uh, Janice uh, posted a link uh, in the in the chat to everybody for this uh, for the case study for. Uh, OUC. And here you can see now it's been installed. They, they got us a good shot of the underside. And there's a whole series of uh, photos. This one, this one tends to, there you can start to see the scale of uh, the, uh, the installation. Um, and I think it took them uh, four or five days to complete the entire walkway um, or the installation of the handrail guardrail. It was, it was pretty quick. Um, so uh, we went from that to um, we were um, contacted uh, Cineplex uh, movie theaters is it's the largest movie theater uh, chain in Canada. They, I think they have 1600 screens across the country and like all movie um, movie theater uh, companies, they're modifying and adapting to uh, to today's world and a lot of their um, theaters are, are being retrofitted for the terrace seating with the uh, you know, the um, recliner chairs um, and a number of new builds and a number of retrofits. Um, and in the, uh, in regardless, but especially in the retrofits, once they've touched it, all the grandfathering of the old systems no longer applies. Um, so um, when, when we were first contacted by one of the uh, 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 GCs, Who's building, uh, uh, doing the doing the uh, Cineplex here in Montreal? They didn't even realize we had the LEDs. They loved the handrail in and of itself. Um, so then discovered the LEDs, um, and it's now a standard for all Cineplex theaters that are being either built or or renovated. Um, it was actually quite gratifying. The first architectural plans we got was before anybody had met us, so it just said handrail. And then it came in and the spec, the spec was promenade and now it's his illuminated promenade. So, um, which um, kind of leads me to, to a question. We're, um, you know, constantly uh, finding ourselves in 
sort of new sectors of the business. And the thing about handrails is they seem to be this funny orphan category. When we go to trade shows, there's no real category for handrails. There's indoor or there's outdoor, or there's metalwork or there's architectural, but it, it's, you know, you're never quite sure. Uh, you know, we did some uh, publicity and advertising many years ago and you go to a trade journal and they don't have a category for handrails. Now to throw in another factor, now we've got electronics in it. So the question we're asking ourselves is, um, the uh, whoever is specifying the handrail, first of all, how do you get to um, uh, deciding that you want lighting? And once that's been decided, who specifies it? Is the person who's specifying the handrail also specifying the electronics? Uh, so if anybody wants to chime in or just write a note, um, that, that would be great. Hang on, I just want to close the door here. Um, here we go. Um, so I'm going to go to, um, uh, if you give me a moment here. There we go. So this is uh, the Cineplex uh, movie theater in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Um, and you can see that all the um, LEDs are are in there. Um, this was, aside from the LEDs, uh, this was a retrofit. So Kel, uh, because it was our first job, Kel made sure he was on site to help them with the installation. And um, uh, what, what, two things, Two major things were discovered. One was that the the architectural plans in some of the theaters didn't actually come close to matching what the profile of the um, the incline was uh, uh, in uh, I think in two of the theaters. Instead of stairs, it's actually a long ramp, and there was a a change of slope in it that was not in the plans. Uh, we were able to accommodate that. Had it been welded, a welded handrail. Uh, the, the handrail at this end of the ramp would have been down around somebody's knees or, or uh, you know, mid-calf. Um, we have a series of bends that can be added and combined and uh, adjusted on the fly. So it was just a case of adding the, uh, the bend during the installation and the problem was solved in seconds. Um, the other thing we discovered was that the, um, we had uh, uh, done the takeoff based on studs being uh, every 16 inches uh, on center. Um, so the first bracket went in and then um, we went to 32 inches, no stud. Uh, took a few minutes to discover that in this theater, all the studs were at 24 inches to accommodate the soundproofing materials that were in the wall, uh, which had absolutely, there was no problem because the brackets could be put wherever um, needed. So um, they weren't fixed in place. So we just put them every 48 inches and uh, problem solved. Um, let me see if we've got another. Uh... There you go. So the um, um, what you'll notice is not only are the uh, promenade um, LEDs in the railing, the um, we eliminated the need to have uh, the floor lighting um, for health and safety because um, uh, this was this provides all the adequate lighting for um, you know safe movement uh, during during the movie. So in the uh, in the rows and the new construction, now we've eliminated um, a conduit, a whole other set of lights, a whole other set of contractors, et cetera. It all goes uh, right into into one system, um, and it became so convenient that the handrail was extended into uh, some areas where the handrail wasn't required, but 
the lighting was required. And it was a heck of a lot easier just to run, you know, continue the handrail horizontally with a couple of extra lights rather than have to put in the, um, the, uh, the, wall, the wall sconces down at the uh, floor level. Um, you'll notice though, also, you can see the, there's a bit of wash and it's not, you know, not the end of the world, but to us, it wasn't good enough. So um, um, we developed, so this is what we call our channel lux flood, which gives you a sort of a, a broader um, uh, illumination field. Um, but along the way, and I think it took us, what, about six weeks or so, uh, we developed what we call the channel lux focus. I'm going to find the link for it. And what that does is it, um, uh, has a very directed beam, so there's no uh, wash to the side to interfere with, you know, with the viewers, uh, you know, get in the the audience's eyes. Nor does it interfere with anything on the screen. So I'll let Kel talk about that while I find. Uh, I just got to get to a, a link that shows it. So, um, Kel, if you want to talk about the, um, it, it's it's tied into the into the theater system and. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Well, how many, yeah, you're uh, a bit, uh, you're broken up a bit. Yeah, okay. you're broken up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, well, I'm going to press on. Um, the channel looks flood, which you see in this photo, uh, as Rob said, did the job, but we knew there would be a, a better way for these auditoriums and areas where you don't want to necessarily see the light. Uh, that's seeing the, the light was. Uh, uh, an advantage in um, the Orlando job. Oh, just uh, he just cut out. So there you go. Um, oh, it's coming back. Yeah. So um, I will get to it. There, there you go. There's, there's the channel X focus. Um, so um, it's the same, uh, same electronics, but also. Um, all all these uh, these uh, the lighting systems they can tie into the um, all the projection uh, systems uh, in the are you there, Kel? Um, there the you go. Signals cutting in and out. Let me know if you can hear. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. Now, yeah, yeah. I was just talking about the electronics and uh, right. they can they can connect them up to either smart home systems or commercial systems like in movie theaters. Absolutely. So you can see in that shot um, and those images the difference between the channel X focus and the channel X flood. And in a nutshell, uh, the focus is a regressed light uh, with a kind of a ba internal baffling. So rather than the um, you know the wide dispersion of light, what you've got is a light that's not visible from the side. Uh, big advantage in that. And that also creates a perfectly rectangular pattern of light on the floor. So you can get a very even um, light city, uh, walkway lighting um, just by the fact that we've got that regressed baffled light. So specifically for those applications. Um, so otherwise they're pretty similar except that the flood, sorry, the focus adds a few more um, tricks. Uh, number one, it's uh, switchable between 12 and 24 volts to make it easier to retrofit into theaters where there's already 12 volts. Um, and it can be tuned uh, locally to have, uh, I mentioned earlier, there's an array of eight LEDs um, inside each one of these uh, units in the channel lux focus. Uh, you can have uh, banks of LEDs illuminated independently. So you can have a wide uh, dispersion, a narrow dispersion, or a, um, or a full uh, brightness uh, wide dispersion. And we also have little uh, blocker pieces that fit inside that further shape the light. Uh, so that you can ensure that you have an even uh, pattern of light upstairs and around corners, and uh, always without the light being visible from the side. Um, so that's the um, basis of the channel lux uh, focus. Um, again, it's uh, indoor outdoor, uh, but this is designed primarily for auditoriums and theaters. Um, and right now, um, the the. Um, the lights are available in one one temperature. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is. I think the um, 
the flood is 3000 K and I don't recall what the, what the focus is. We don't have different colors, so th they're dimmable and one temperature, but you know, uh, it's possible to expand the line if, if the, the demand is there. But, um, you know, as I said at the beginning, we, we like to keep it as simple as possible. Um, so, um, uh, is, is the, Temperature the same in the focus, Kel? I, I don't remember. It's it's a new, fairly new product for us. Uh, I don't hear I don't hear you, but I, I can get the uh, the the uh, the specs to you. So, um, so that is um, really the the uh, the full the full story um, behind the the lighting. Um, again, it was. Design. We wanted form and function to work together. We want simplicity. Um, you know, versatility. Um, you know, when when uh, doing the installation, you might find. You know, the installer might find. You know what? I'd like a little less light, a little more light. You can adjust the spacing at any point. You could add or uh, you know remove uh, modules. Um, so it gives you just all kinds of um, you know uh, choices and and options um, that you don't have to lock into six months before uh, the, the construction starts. The, the decisions can be made you know, on the job site, on the fly. And that's really um, you know, what we, what we uh, strive for is simplifying everything um, and not locking, locking everything into, you've made your decision and now you gotta, now you gotta live with it or wait six months to, to change it. So um um uh, have i janice kel is there anything else that um you wanted me to want me to cover um uh if anybody wants to you know write us a note or uh, even type in um you know some of the challenges you've faced with lighting or if you have any questions now's a now's a great time if you have any um projects you'd like to share with us, you can actually go on to our website and uh, submit them through customer service and it comes to our platform uh, and we're notified and, um, uh, you know, we can put together, uh, we can review plans that, um, you know, even if they're in the early stages, we, you know, we see some, uh, um, you know, potential um uh, I'm not to call them roadblocks, but you know hurdles and uh, ways of getting things uh, simpler to either conform to code with the handrail itself, or um, you know setting it up so the installation and the wiring and you know connecting up with the LEDs is uh, simpler at the at the end of the uh, at the end of the game. So, um, yeah, Rob, maybe you could go to the gallery on the website and just show some of the range. From there. Sure. Let me do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Still breaking up. Yeah. Yeah. You're breaking up. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Um, yeah. He'll he'll go outside. So um, this is just a range of you know, different types of projects we're doing. Um, the, the photos right here are the uh, Gansevoort Hotel in um, in Manhattan. They redid the stairs. Uh, it's just a beautiful uh, granite stairway to a, a bar in the, I guess it's a, a cellar bar. And um, Janice and I were there um, a while back. Um, uh, this is um, Australia, so we're um, promenade. So we ship everything out of Montreal, but it um, it goes anywhere in the world. So we, uh, you know, we have work being done in every province in Canada, every state uh, in the U.S., uh, mainland, and um, you know, uh, offshore Norway, New Zealand, Australia. Um, so very, very easy to collaborate with this type of system from the planning right to the uh, shipping and installation anywhere uh, in the world. Um, um, and I'd be remiss, uh, Janice and, uh, would be very upset with me because I have a habit of being very excited. Uh, we were specified recently by, you know, 
uh, pro said promenade on the plans uh, the Gensler office out of Houston specified us for uh, a, a nice job at the SpaceX um, uh, launch site in Boca Chica. And I'm an absolute nut about the space program. So I've now got my excuse to get down to uh, to Boca Chica and hopefully be there when, when a launch uh, uh, goes off. Those are being shipped next week. So um, I, it's, again, gratifying to see something we created being uh, chosen for some pretty, pretty high end stuff. Someone's asking, Rob, if we have exterior handrail systems. Yeah, so the um, we have two types, uh, you know, uh, actually three finishes. So um, these are anodized. So the finish is, uh, uh, it's an anod powder, uh, sorry, um, an anodized uh, aluminum. Everything is the, it's, we have the one profile for the handrail. It's 1.6 inch diameter. It's the same uh, size as schedule 40, 1.25 tube. Um, so we've got, um, I think four anodized finishes that are perfect for indoor outdoor. Um, you saw the um, the images from Orlando. That is the exact same handrail as this one in this office. Um, we also have a powder coat white. I call it the HOA model because anytime we get somebody and it starts my uh, my homeowners association wants invariably they want a white handrail uh, on the, on the person's uh, front stairs or something. So. Um, Silver, this is uh, in Tabor, Iowa. Um, um, uh, so that's, you can see, fine for outdoors. Um, this, uh, let me just scroll down, see if we've got, oh, so this was, this is in Boston College in, um, uh, in Boston. Why don't I say something redundant? Uh, this, this was actually a pretty neat project. Um, so what you're seeing there is oak and it's real oak. It's a thin layer of real oak bonded to the aluminum. So we have oak uh, either pre-varnished or unfinished and we have black walnut. Other species can be done depending, you know, just a question of volume. Um, this is a lecture hall that the only uh, system that was really practical was ours because this is all very soft soundproofing uh, material and we were, the handrail is being replaced and they, the bracket had to go exactly on these existing wood pucks. Uh, so um, we were able, so that's, there's a closer picture of the, uh, um, the wood. Um, and um, we're developing, um, it's funny, nobody asked for something until they see what's not available. Uh, nobody asked, <laughs> had asked for a wood bend until they saw that they couldn't have one when we came out with our wood handrail. So we're also developing a system of, uh, to make the bends out of uh, wood. Um, um, this is, this was, and again, sometimes we just have to adapt the system for things we're not expecting. Let me see if I got it. Oh, here's the shot. So uh, this is a stage at a, it was a reclaimed old uh, paper mill in South Carolina, uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina. And uh, there's some cool pictures of it from, I think, 1905 and then from today. Um, and they built this performance stage. They wanted safety railing on it when it wasn't being used, but they wanted to be able to remove it. So without even having to create a new um, component or you know product, we were able to um, just combine our existing, um, you know, uh, components and uh, fasten it to the face of the stage. And I can't remember, I think they undo it. I can't remember exactly where they undo it, but this can be removed and, and reinstalled uh, very quickly. They haven't installed the LEDs here uh, in, you know, when these pictures were taken, but it'll also have some uh, LEDs. Um, um, you know, entertainment venues. This is the uh, Indianapolis uh, Motor Speedway. Uh, they had rebuilt this deck. There's a golf course there, partly inside the track and partly outside. And it was uh, April 10th or 12th, I remember getting the call and the crowds and every all the, all the activity starts May 1st and they couldn't find a handrail for this, for this uh, rebuilt deck. Uh, so, um, 
we we designed it, shipped, and it was installed. I think April by April twenty sixth. So they were pretty pleased they were able to do that. They took the picture. I didn't notice it. Kel did while they were racing off with the truck with the packaging. So, um, uh, so uh, airports really good for high volume, long, uh, you know, hallways. This is. Uh, we're doing all of Baptist Medical Center in uh, Jacksonville, all the new builds and, and renovations. So this is about 15,000 feet, of, uh, you know, so far that we've done. Um, this is a project similar to what we did in Boston. This is in Pittsburgh. We want to extend the hallway handrail, but they needed something that could attach to the to the framing of the windows. So that that went uh, was a pretty easy, you know pretty easy choice for them um this uh we're doing a lot of um senior living affordable housing there are these long hallways um so this is casa de las campanas in uh san diego it was an order from about eight thousand feet of uh, handrail i think we could get that you know packed and shipped to them in the space of about two two and a half weeks um took some design work to do but uh uh when you know, very, very quickly. Um, um, this is uh, affordable housing just outside of Toronto um, where they needed the combined guardrail and handrail. So um, it's, again, everything modular, the balusters, um, uh, the lengths of railing, everything um, just, you know, shipped. Um, and, and coincidentally, the... Um, the construction is uh, modular. Uh, the, the whole building is modular. So, um, but to date, what they do is uh, install the handrails after. You know, we we spoke with them. You know, if you're putting something together that's modular, they would still put the handrails in after. But um, um, things never go quite according to plan in terms of as built versus the architectural plan. So, uh, this made life uh, a lot a lot easier. Um, oh, this, I'll just very quickly talk about uh, uh, one of our more recent innovations is it looks like a benign post base, but many posts are on a ramp that's a five degree slope and our clients were continually lamenting the fact that they had the core drill or somehow offset it or shimmer. How do you get the post vertical um, on a sloped surface? So you can almost see there's a there's a, a split here this is actually two halves and as you rotate it it's like um, it's like a disc cut on the diagonal as you rotate it it pivots the post to offset the angle um, so even on horizontal surfaces a sidewalk that is in theory horizontal is quite often off you know quite often not quite horizontal you can still adjust so um, uh, so that I think covers, you know, a lot of what we do, obviously on glass, you know, putting it on glass with LEDs is spectacular. Um, and, um, you know, it all, um, is designed by us for you. Uh, you can send us, you know, the plans, we've got everything from a pencil sketch to, you know, the most, um, detailed architectural plans and uh, put together the take off the renders, the shop drawings, um, you know, all the instructions, the installation instructions. So uh, right from right from planning to uh, post con the post construction phase where if something goes awry, um, I think they're calling the architect to find out what's going on. Fortunately, um, I don't I don't know that we've had any calls, but if there is a problem, it's a it's a system that can be easily um, fixed because you don't have to take the whole thing out. So uh, I think I've covered just about everything. Any yeah. looks like we've got a question about um, if you provide structural calculations for code required lateral force resistance. We do. We have the uh, data uh, done for all of that. We've got the report. So we have our base report that covers off you know, every scenario. Um, and then for the particular project, depending on, uh, you know, in some cases, they just want to know that the data is there and they can reference it. 
Um, in other cases, they have to have an engineer approved, um, you know, stamped approval, uh, which is um, usually done by somebody. It needs to be done by somebody local, either, you know, with a state li license in that state or province. Um, and we help coordinate all that. Um, so we did that for Orlando, for the affordable housing outside of Toronto that you uh, that I just showed. Um, the all of the Cineplex theaters have to have um, an engineer approved um, shop drawing as well. So um, so we can go from somebody who's just putting in you know a DIY who's putting it into their house and they don't need anything through to uh, fully approved, stamped, and reviewed um, plans. So the short answer is yes. Uh, the long answer is, you know, at whatever level you need it, yes. Awesome. All right, great. Um, well, while we give it another moment or so to see if any other last minute questions come in, just wanted to uh, mention to everyone, as you're leaving today's webinar, there's going to be a quick post-event survey. Um, feel free to drop any questions onto that survey as well. Um, if you can give us a little feedback about uh, how today's webinar went for you, if it was relevant to you and your project areas, that would be awesome. Um, really helps us to keep bringing you content that uh, is helpful for you and your projects. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Well, one thing I, I would also like to mention is one of the, um, you know, we don't expect somebody to um, learn about us today and uh, spec us into a project this afternoon, although we'd like it, but we don't, we don't expect it. Um, uh, you all have colleagues that need to hear more about it and learn more about it. And it's always a challenge to convey something new uh, and convey it and <laughs> explain it accurately to somebody who wasn't, wasn't there. Uh, so we're um, happy to, uh, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, we're more than happy to come and do uh, live lunch and learns. Um, we're focusing a bit more on the, the Northeast right now just because of easier travel. But um, if uh, anybody is interested in a live uh, lunch and learn, we're, uh, please give us a shout. Um, I'll say up front, they're, they're not accredited, um, but um, we've discovered that they're very well attended. And there's a lot of interest just because of the nature and sort of the, the challenges uh, everybody faces with handrails. Uh, we live, eat, and breathe handrails um, a little weirdly obsessively, but um, it's something we know and are happy to share so you don't have to worry about it. So, um, so you know, we're often getting, you know, at a lunch and, you know, live lunch and learns, you know, 15, 20, 25 people coming. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, definitely reach out if you'd like to schedule something in person for your firm. Um, all right, looks like we don't have any other questions and we are just about at time. So Rob or Janice, is there anything else you'd like to share before we uh, jump off for the day? No, I can't think of anything. Thank you so much for, for coming. Um, uh, like uh, Bo said, if there's any questions, just you know, uh, send us a message and we're, we're happy to happy to talk. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much to everyone who came out and attended today. And thank you, Rob and Janice, for a presentation. It's great to see so many case studies and uh, yeah, really get to see the product in action. Thanks so awesome. much. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye.